And we are back. In part one of this series, I looked at how I would purpose a cash prize of $100,000. In today's video, I'm going to be amping that number right up to a number that would allow me to do whatever I want every day for the rest of my life, as long as I purposed it correctly from the very beginning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down how I would allocate the winnings from a lottery ticket that paid out $10 million. With this type of sum, we are entering life changing money and not only for myself. And as I mentioned in part one, there is no tax paid on gambling winnings in Australia. So I would be walking away with the full $10 million sum. Now, if this were to occur, the first thing that I would be doing even well before cashing that ticket is panicking. And this is because although money is great, it is also a bit of a curse. When people know that you have money, specifically a lot of money, people's behaviors and attitudes change quite dramatically and they would change aspects of how they interact with you on the daily. I have personal experience. I have seen firsthand money tear families apart. People get greedy and then generally generate expectations of what they are owed. And they actually might be stories worth covering in the future. So feel free to subscribe to the channel down below if that's something that you might be interested in learning about the juicy gossip of how money ruined these people's lives. But for now, back to the story of what I would be doing if I were to win this sum of $10 million is at the very beginning, absolutely nothing. I would definitely not be cashing this ticket in day one. I would not be quitting my nine to five job and I would be using every ounce of discipline I have in my body to avoid telling a single soul that I've just won this sum of money. And to be completely truthful, I believe this would be impossible, but nonetheless, in my mind right now, I believe that is how I would be approaching this situation. Once I put my plan together of what I was going to do with it, I would then accept the winnings and I would most likely put them into a bank account that no one I know should have visibility to so I can then start planning how I'm going to A, include it in not only my own life, but their life as well. And this is where the fun begins. The first step to allocating these funds would be to pay myself first. I would be spreading 50%, so $5 million of that take home 10 million between specific asset classes. As a rough outline, I would be putting at least half of that 5 million, so that's $2.5 million into my two favorite ETFs on the Australian share market. I would most likely put between 500,000 and $1 million into cryptocurrency, which would most likely be spread at the moment between Bitcoin and Ethereum and would consider using the remaining $1.5 million to pay off my current existing debts and then use whatever's left over out of that $1.5 million to purchase a third investment property. This as a simple overview would set me up for life. It would give me decent exposure across multiple asset classes, which do two things in particular. Number one, they would have the ability to appreciate in value over time, which is a great thing to build wealth. And not only that, they would also provide investment returns annually. To paint the picture, let's estimate a very, very conservative 4% return from just my $2.5 million investment into my two favorite ETFs on the Australian share market. 4% of $2.5 million is $100,000 per annum, which is a decent enough salary to survive off of here in Australia, where I live in particular. Not only that, if the market performed better and those returns were higher, I would then be able to reinvest the excess, which would do nothing but continually build my wealth and portfolio in that specific asset class. Not only that, having three investment properties with no debt whatsoever would be generating somewhere in the realm of 60 to $100,000 in rental income, which again, after taxes and all the fees associated with owning property would pay a pretty nice amount of money into my bank account, further boosting my annual income, allowing me again to survive off of that income. And then the crypto assets would just sit there and over time, hopefully appreciate never needing to to be touched. That is a hedge against inflation, a hedge against anything that I believe is going to go down. It's me diversifying into other asset classes. And if they do appreciate over time, it's only going to build my wealth further and be a nice little safety net. If they go down to nothing, oh well, I took a risk. I took a chance with money that I was able to put towards that cause. 
I could even stake them for returns, but that comes with its own risks as well. The point is, is the exposure and the income that they technically should generate across all of these asset classes would be more than enough to live off of while also building wealth further. Now, step two would be to purchase a forever home in a location that I want to spend the rest of my life. Based on where I live here in South Australia, I estimate right now at this point in time, based on the current market, that about $2 million would get me exactly what I need slash want without needing any additional works done. It should give me exactly what I'm after, which leaves me with $3 million unallocated, which is a pretty hefty sum. And that's where step three comes into play. That would be to give away at least $1 million out of the remaining 3 million to the people closest in my life. I do not like parting with my money. However, I know the good that it could do and being greedy with that type of winning that type of sum of money coming into my bank account is not something that I would feel overly good about if I didn't do some good for others with it. I would definitely be thinking long and hard about who I want to give this money to and how I want to hand it out. I do not like giving lump sums of money in my mind. It's not something that I think would have a positive effect. To some degree, it would depending on who I give it to, but it would be in my best interest to somehow drip feed this money into their bank accounts or into their cost of living expenses for a period of time that can alleviate pressures that are rising, things like interest rates rising, things like the cost of living going up, having the ability to provide people in my life that I care about with that type of benefit would definitely, in my opinion, come better suited in something like an allowance that is funded into their accounts over time with the intention of, like I said, helping them get ahead of the game and not being able to just blow it on something that they most likely would regret spending that money on in the future. In my mind, the people that I would want to give this money to would be very humbled by the gifts that I would be giving them. And I don't know if that's naive of me to say, I would definitely look into the best ways to go about doing it. If it was to do it anonymously, so be it. I've, I'm pretty sure they would figure out that I've come into some money if they saw my ability to buy a $2 million house and basically quit my job eventually. But nonetheless, I would do my best to make sure that it goes to them in a way that's beneficial over time and not just in a lump sum that they can just go and blow in a short period of time which leaves me with $2 million left over. I would definitely be putting at least 1 million of that spread between four different bank accounts with four different banking institutions. The purpose of doing that would be to almost make it guaranteed to be covered by the government where the Australian government covers up to $250,000 per bank account, per financial institution, meaning it would be in my best interest to make sure that they're spread across those different banks. But the point is I would try my very best to keep that $1 million sum topped up until the day I die as a safety net and as something that allows me to siphon from in the events where I need access to it. Based on my previous planning earlier, I should never need access to it, but nonetheless, it would be there as a safety net in the event of a very, very rainy day. So the final million, what would I do with it? That would be my spending money. It would be my fun money because you have to reward yourself in these types of situations. I think the temptation would be almost impossible to avoid. I would definitely deck out my wardrobe, upgrade all of my technology, probably buy a few guitars and potentially a new car. They are the main things that are at the back of my mind when I had to have a think about what I would be buying, that's what I went to. The rest of that money would be to invest in myself. First off, I would most likely quit my day job, which then with my newly acquired free time, I would put some time and effort into things like joining a chess club and potentially paying a tutor to up my game, just get better at it. It's something that I've wanted to do for a really long time and I don't have the time, nor do I really have the money to waste on something like that at this point. So this would give me a pretty good excuse to go and pursue that further. The same goes for YouTube. I really like making videos. The topics that I would be talking about might differ. They might stay the same, but I would probably get some help from others to make the quality of these videos better. I know the topics can be quite dry and I know that I don't have all the time in the world to edit them as best as I possibly can. So having the ability to do that would be something that I would really be interested in doing. And finally, I would be paying a basically music teacher to teach me how to play the drums. It's been on my list forever. I will get to it eventually. And it's something that I would absolutely be pursuing in a heartbeat because I really think it's something that I missed out on as a younger person. And I would really 
love to learn how to play them. So it's something that I haven't been necessarily putting off. It's something that I have wanted to pursue, but need the time to do it. And the final way that I would be investing in myself would be to basically focus on my fitness as much as possible to live the healthiest lifestyle I can, because it's in my best interest to maximize the period that I'm going to live for, because I think that there's plenty of life to live and plenty of things to do. So this again would be a portion of that money. That's where it would be going to maximize that output. And this is where we come into the back end of today's video, where coming into this kind of money would be the dream. And I know it would be the dream for almost anyone who isn't gonna want $10 million. It's just a crazy sum of money. But personally, it would let me skip this middle section of my life in terms of working towards building wealth to being able to live out the rest of my days comfortably whilst also doing all the things that I wanna do now and have wanted to do in the past and will want to do in the future whenever I want to do them. It's a massive opportunity to be able to live a life that doesn't necessarily need that balance of working really hard to achieve a little bit of entertainment, fun and comfort. In one line, it fast tracks the path that I'm already on and that would be invaluable to me. Now that's part two of how I would handle winning the lottery. Part three, we're going big. I'm talking a hundred million dollars. What the hell am I going to do with that kind of money? I guess you're gonna to have to subscribe to the channel, like this video and stick around for when that video comes out because that one is absolutely going to be a doozy. Part three being $100 million, what would I do with it? Truly is an incomprehensible amount of money to handle and Truthfully, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with it. So you're gonna to have to stick around to find out. For now, leave me a comment down below on what you might do differently with $10 million. I would be very curious to see how others might handle that situation. It's a fun topic to discuss nonetheless. So if you want to do that, comment section is down below and I will leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.